Welcome to KZSC News in the Morning, local news from the Monterey Bay. In a recent hoax, posted flyers read, The Santa Cruz City Council considers distributing free methamphetamine. It claims that people who feel the need to sleep outside between 11 p.m. and 8.30 a.m. may be able to attain free meth to stay awake due to the controversial outdoor sleeping ban in Santa Cruz. The city council does not condone this. The flyer's creator, Keith McHenry, is affiliated with Food Not Bombs, which provides food for people experiencing homelessness. McHenry says that he was hoping to raise awareness about the sleeping ban, since many people are unaware of it and are frequently ticketed for sleeping outside. The Poganip, our beautiful natural landscape on the UCSD campus, is being threatened by the Santa Cruz City Council and City Parks Commission plan called the City of Santa Cruz Draft Parks Master Plan 2030. This plan sets out the intentions over the next 15 years for improving Santa Cruz's parks, recreational areas, and beaches through the pursuit of new parking lots, new mountain bike trails, buildings, and more. The Poganip is a small part of the plan, but would be a major disruption for the wildlife and people of Santa Cruz that are devoted to hiking through the trails and enjoying the nature. library system will be hosting the grand opening of a Veterans Information Center on February 16th at noon. The goal of this center is to connect veterans with resources that are available to them. Volunteers will assist veterans in discovering support ranging from education and employment to housing and health. At the opening ceremony, there will be food, speeches, and opportunities to connect with veterans from the community. The Veterans Information Center will be open Monday through Wednesday and also by appointment. Between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. on Monday morning, Santa Cruz community members witnessed low-flying helicopters with spotlights, an armored vehicle, and stun grenades used in the raid and the arrest of at least nine individuals associated with the violent street gang MS-13. Families reported waiting outside as their apartment building was searched. Santa Cruz Police Department cooperated with Homeland Security, including personnel in Immigrations and Customs Enforcement uniforms, to carry out the raid. Deputy Santa Cruz Police Chief Dan Flippo stated that this was in no way an immigration raid. On Tuesday, concerned members of the community assembled outside of the city council and spoke during the meeting's time for public comment. Yesterday at 4 a.m., I heard a big bump in my complex. And so me and my husband got up really scared because we didn't know what was happening. We looked through the window and the back and the back uh, court, there were a bunch of, we thought they were soldiers because it was dark. We couldn't see them. They were carrying big guns and they were pointing at everywhere. So I told my husband, just get down on the floor. I don't know what's happening. They started screaming, hands up, hands up. So we thought they are against a criminal, right? So we just got on the floor and then on our knees, we crawled to get our kids. Children are terrified. They're afraid their parents are going to be deported. We want our kids to be in school and growing. We want them to be learning. We don't want them to be so afraid that they don't go to school. I believe that Santa Cruz Police Department has a problem at this moment in terms of credibility and trust with the Latino community. This morning I had an opportunity to meet with some junior high school students. The types of questions that they asked regarding what do I do if I get stopped, Um, what happens to my parents, Um, didn't we have a sanctuary city, that was from junior high school students saying what does it mean and they're having a disconnect between what happened and what we were told. KZSC News spoke with an anonymous family in the Beach Flats community whose home was raided. The family described being woken up at 3 a.m. on the 13th to what they thought was an earthquake, but was actually Homeland Security officers running up the stairs to their apartment and breaking down the door. The officers came in with guns and asked for a man that does not live in the building and for the family's papers, which the family then provided. A warrant was shown to them much later. It was in English and incomplete. Residents were taken outside without their shoes on and in their pajamas at 4 a.m. The father said that when he started taking off his sweater, one of the officers pointed a gun at him. When the family was let back into their house, their belongings were strewn everywhere. The mother said, it's humiliating. They treat us like criminals. Colleges nationwide are struggling to meet the demand for mental health care. According to Megan Thielking, a writer for the online health magazine, STAT, students often have to wait weeks for just an initial intake exam to review their symptoms. The wait to see a psychiatrist, who can prescribe or adjust medication, can be longer still. Only 6 in 10 colleges have a psychiatrist. UC Santa Cruz has two temporary psychiatrists and one psychiatric nurse practitioner. 
Depending on the school, the wait time to see a therapist ranges from 10 days up to 4 weeks. UCSC's average wait time is just under two weeks, but Gary Dunn, director of UC Santa Cruz's Counseling and Mental Health Services, explains their calling system. Our main point of entry is our phone triage process so that any time a student wants services, they can connect with one of our therapists. They set up an appointment and then they call in and it's usually within a day or two. That's what we shoot for. So that in a very short period of time, we can get a sense of where someone's at, what their issues are, what they need from us and develop a plan. Ash hung on the ceiling and colorful crocheted coral arms reached out to the audience to exhibit an artistic response to global warming and the escalating problem of oceanic plastic trash. On February 10th, the Mary Porter Cessnon Art Gallery hosted the opening reception to the Crochet Coral Reef exhibition. The gallery showcases coral reef displays crocheted using hyperbolic patterns, manifesting work which intersects mathematics, marine biology, handicrafts, and community art practice. The Crochet Coral Reef exhibit attracted about 150 people of varying age ranges, from students to faculty to community members and their kids. The Crochet Coral Reef project will be exhibited at the Cessnon Art Gallery until May 6. Admission to the gallery is free and open to the public. In addition, UCSC students, faculty, staff, and members of the community are contributing to the movement by crocheting their own satellite reef, which will be showcased at the Seymour Marine Discovery Center on May 4. Last week, highly publicized detention and deportation sweeps around the country by the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency have alarmed immigrant communities fearful that these raids are a sign of a harsh new climate for them under the Trump administration. The anxiety that many of the undocumented currently feel stems from the anti-immigration rhetoric Donald Trump used in his campaign and also in the early days of his presidency. 160 people were arrested in Southern California, sparking a wave of rumors of ICE checkpoints and indiscriminate mass deportation sweeps, according to the Coalition for Human Rights Los Angeles. David Marin, the Director of Enforcement and Removal Operations for ICE in Los Angeles, said in the LA Times he is concerned that fear-mongering and misinformation, quote, can put communities and law enforcement personnel in unnecessary danger. Santa Cruz County sheriffs and the Santa Cruz police both limit their cooperation with federal immigration authorities, providing sanctuary and reassurance to local and documented immigrants and their families though the Trump administration has signaled recently that it could revoke federal funding for local governments that disregard federal immigration laws. This could lead to increased scrutiny of the dozens of college campuses that have declared themselves sanctuaries. Last week, George Blumenthal added UC Santa Cruz to that growing list, aligned with the UC system-wide sanctuary policy championed by the UC president and former U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano. As DHS Secretary, Napolitano oversaw ICE for four years under the Obama administration. Blumenthal spoke to the UCSC Martin Luther King Jr. Convocation on February 9th. At UC Santa Cruz, we have approximately 400 undocumented students. We will continue to admit undocumented students to the university. And I have told them that UC Santa Cruz as a campus and the University of California as a whole stands with them, with their families and with their communities. We will protect their privacy and their rights. Our police will not partner with any government agencies to enforce federal immigration law. This weekend, in response to a scheduled defund Planned Parenthood rally, Planned Parenthood supporters lined two city blocks on Pacific Avenue stretching from Cathcart Street to Walnut Avenue. A group of 13 people were gathered at the back entrance of Planned Parenthood on Cedar Street with pro-life, anti-Planned Parenthood signs. The rally was peaceful and orderly. KZSE News spoke to members from both rallying groups. Here is a statement from Nikisha, a community member that attended in support of Planned Parenthood. I really don't think people understand that Planned Parenthood not only like helps with abortions and women's health, but trans health as well and those who don't have health care and can afford it, and I really believe in that. This is what John, an attendee of the defund Planned Parenthood rally, had to say about why he came out. The point of the rally for us is to bring awareness to some of the activities that Planned Parenthood is involved in that we object to. It's not all the activities that they do. They do lots of good things. 
but several of those things we object to. So we wanted to come out and voice our opinions and let people know not everybody in Santa Cruz is okay with everything Planned Parenthood does. For more information and resources, go to kzsc.org and look for the blog post titled Planned Parenthood Rally. I'm Jeannie Santos for KZSC's Monterey Bay News. I'm Frances Mauer. I'm Malin Rose. I'm Jennifer Arriaga, signing off. Reporting for KZSC News, I'm Morgan Corona. And I'm Kavya Asodati.